William Binney spent 30 years with the NSA before resigning in 2001 and beginning a whistleblowing crusade over the agency's flagrant violation of the U.S. Constitution. Now, he has joined forces with Richard Gage, signing the petition from Architects and Engineers for 9-11 Truth, calling for a new investigation into what really happened on 9-11-2001. This is a GRTV feature interview with our special guests, William Binney and Richard Gage. Well, let's start with you, uh, William Binney, because this is your first time on the program, and perhaps for some of my listeners, I'm sure many of my listeners will be familiar with you, but for those who aren't, why don't we just talk a little bit about your background, your time with the NSA, and what drove you to become an NSA whistleblower? Okay, uh, well, I, I, I started uh, my uh, uh, experience in the SIGINT business, the signals intelligence business, uh, with the United States Army back in 1965. I was uh, getting out of school then, and uh, they were drafting people to go in the army and kill people in Vietnam. So I, being a country boy, you know, I was a good shot. So I was a candidate, prime candidate. Everybody I knew going into the military at that time being drafted was being, <clears throat> uh, were, were put into these rifle companies and sent out in the front lines in, Af in uh, Vietnam to kill people. So I, I didn't want to do that. So I checked out my options and uh, volunteering. What could I do and to avoid that kind of thing? And so... Uh, well, the recruiters, of course, they, you know, they told me all kinds of stories, but uh, uh, the point was that they said, you can get into intelligence here and, you know, you, you won't be in the rifle companies. And so you, you can have an opportunity to, uh, to do something other than kill people. So I, I thought that was a great option. So I figured I'd do that. And so uh, <clears throat> that was my, uh, my introduction to NSA. And that got me into uh, into the intelligence business at NSA. And uh, from there on, um, I wanted to get out of service and they wanted to recruit me. And so I became a high priority recruit. And then I joined NSA as a civilian. Uh, I got out of service in 69, joined NSA in 70. And then I stayed there until, uh, <clears throat> until October, 2001. And uh, throughout that career, I was for almost 30 years, I was involved in analyzing the Soviet Union, breaking codes and things like that. And, data systems, ciphers, you know, all, all kinds of things like that. Um, and uh, that's, that's, that's where I got into uh, doing that kind of thing. And so I was designing systems at that time. And the systems I came up with were uh, ways and means to solve uh, the volume velocity variety problem and do a selective attack on uh, being able to look at all the data, first of all, and then select out only that which was relevant to, to issues of crime or uh, military or any kind of uh, uh, political activity in the world so, so that we could monitor that and keep track of that. Well, that was, uh, that, was uh, that solution I came on board in, uh, in uh, uh, 2002 and we, uh, or 2000, uh, late 2000, we had it running completely. And so we were, we were at the time proposing we deploy that to uh, take care of the terrorist problem to 18 sites around the world for $9 million. Okay, that's all it was going to cost so that we could monitor everything the terrorists were doing anytime they did anything. So, uh, and that was the whole point of it. So uh, to make it short, they, they rejected that because it didn't cost enough money, didn't build a big empire, and, you know, <laughs> that, was the, that was their fundamental problem with it. So... Uh, that's what they did. Then they, they basically ignored it even after until 9-11. And then they looked around and they said, well, hey, this program that we did would, would handle massive amounts of data. In other words, we saw no limit as to how much data we could handle. And we could index it and uh, graph it and understand what was in it and also um, map it together so we could do timelines for all kinds of massive data. Uh, so that was the thing that they looked at as useful to them to monitor everybody in the United States and indeed everybody in the world. And so that's where they went. And they did that starting in October of 2001. And so at that point, I decided, well, I have to get the hell out of here because I can't be a part of this, you know. So, I mean, this is a real mess and I couldn't, uh, I couldn't stand by. So it, for the next seven years, I tried along with Kirk Weeby and uh, Diane Rourke and Tom Drake to try to get the government to correct its ways, uh, you know, by working inside the government going to the intelligence committees, the inspector general, the Department of Defense and Department of Justice, and also other members of Congress that weren't part of the intelligence committees. And none of that worked. It was all basically uh, a failure. All it did was uh, draw attention to us and uh, that we were 
loose cannons on deck, so to speak, and, and nobody wanted anybody to be aware of the real program that they were running. And so they, uh, they sent the FBI to uh, raid us and threaten us and intimidate us. And then they used the DOJ after that to, um, to uh, threaten us with prosecution. They manufactured evidence, by the way, which I caught them at. That's why they dropped it. They, I, didn't, I, Tom, I didn't have the evidence to save Tom Drake, so he had to go to trial. But uh, <clears throat> Jim Bamford also uh, looked at that and found all the data that they were accusing him of, of having that was classified. He found it all on the web. I mean, it was all, it was all issued by NSA on the web. So, I mean, you know, this was uh, this is our Department of Justice fabricating evidence to to try people. I mean, this is insane. You know, this is what this is why I've been calling this a police state. And that shift in focus towards mass bulk collection of data was motivated specifically by 9-11 or was that something that had been discussed before the events of 9-11? Well, at the time, I thought it was motivated by 9-11. But uh uh, later on in 2006, when uh, some testimony by uh, the CEO of Quest, Nacho, and uh, his court case came out, and the lawyer said that uh, Nacho, and they had records for the visit and all to, to, to uh, go with that, was visited on the 27th of February of 2001 by someone from NSA. It was either uh, uh, General Hayden or someone else. Uh, and they came in and, and asked him to supply them with all of the customer data that he had on hand. That meant all the billing records and communications uh, of all the people he was, who were his subscribers. It's just like the billing data they took from AT&T and Verizon, just like that Verizon order. This was, again, <clears throat> without a court order, and it was done basically by, by uh, word of mouth. And he said, well, if you give me a warrant, I'll give it to you. And, uh, of course, they weren't prepared to do that, so they wanted to do it all in secret again because uh, it was a violation of our constitutional rights, and they didn't want anybody opposing it. So there was a shift already taking place, but it was certainly um, uh, the, the, the public uh, re- unveiling of that shift was, um, was motivated by 9-11 and the, the supposed terrorist threat that 9-11 itself represented. So that brings us, I think, to the other part of our conversation with our so far silent partner, Richard Gage. Uh, first of all, Richard, obviously, um, my regular listeners will be familiar with yourself and your organization, but there's always new listeners joining in. Why don't you just explain to us what Architects and Engineers for 9-11 Truth is? We're a nonprofit organization of over 2,200 architects and engineers now demanding a real investigation of what happened at the World Trade Center. We have over 19,000 other uh, individuals uh, joining us demanding a real investigation uh, based on the specific evidence, the scientific evidence for explosive controlled demolition at all three World Trade Center skyscrapers on 9-11. Now, tell us specifically about the petition that's available for signing by architects and engineers and other supporters at AE911truth.org. The petition demands of Congress a real investigation uh, that uh, of the destruction of these three high-rises, including World Trade Center Building 7, a 47-story <laughs> skyscraper that falls uh, on the afternoon of 9-11 without having been hit by an airplane straight down uniformly, symmetrically into its own footprint just about at free fall acceleration in under seven seconds. So these licensed and degreed uh, individuals are placing their reputations on the line having looked at and examined the eyewitness testimony, the video testimony, and the forensic evidence um, available to everybody on the uh, internet, not in the mainstream media. Uh, based on all of that, uh, demanding a real investigation, uh, NIST, the National Institute of Standards and Technology, did not perform a, an investigation at all. They were just building reports, and they are full of fraud. Now, this is where we can start to connect these two narratives. Um, Mr. Binney, I understand that you recently signed the petition to become a supporter of AE 9-11 Truth. Tell us about the story of how and when you came to sign this petition. Well, I, I, uh, I was at the uh, uh, Ridden Hour Award ceremony in 30 April of this year. 
Uh, I was uh, asked to accept the award for Laura, Laura Poikas. Uh, both Laura and uh, and uh, the Snowden got got the, got awards there at that at that time, and uh, I was uh, I was accepting for Laura, and we had a conference afterward, a uh, a panel meeting that that uh, discussed some of the issues with uh, with what was going on in the United States at the time, and. Uh, 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 David uh, Schlesinger was there, and he asked me toward the end of the panel if I would uh, <clears throat> if I would come and just listen to them to hear what they had to say. So uh, I did. I, I agreed to do that, and of course it took me a while to do that, but uh, uh, and that was just recently that I did. And I went to um, Dr. Uh, Tim Eastman's house. He's a physicist, uh, and. Uh, uh, David and, and, and Tim took, took me through all the evidence that they were looking at and talking about because I'd never looked at that myself because I'm not a structural engineer or a demolitions expert or anything like that. So I couldn't, I mean, what I would say about it doesn't really mean a great deal because I don't know that much, but I do know science and I do know um, what good science is and what bad science is. Um, and it was pretty clear to me that uh, at at best what they were doing and what they could call it was sloppy science. That was that was what I got out of the NIST uh, statements. So um, I from there I just said, um, <clears throat> well I would sign the uh, the uh, the uh, the petition to get a new investigation that wouldn't ignore basic facts or basic observable uh, occurrences. That that's fundamental to science. You don't you don't uh, basic observation is <laughs> fundamental. I'm, it's not something you just because you don't like something you don't ignore it, and like I said earlier, I mean if, if you if you'll never solve a crypto problem if that's if you take that approach you just will ab absolutely fail at every turn. So that that's why that's that's how I came to uh, to sign the petition. So, Mr. Gage, I understand this is your first time talking to, to Mr. Binney directly. What what was your reaction when you found out that he was one of the signatories to this petition? Um, I was delighted that uh, we have former high-level officials in the U.S. intelligence um, and um, others who have come forward uh, to join us in our growing call uh, for a new investigation. Those um, officials are impeccable, and he's getting the word out along with the other whistleblowers in the United States, and we... We have to have more and more people like Bill stepping forward, or, or like Bill said, uh, we're we're very concerned also that we're stepping into a police state as a result of the policies enacted as a result of 9/11. So if there is any question about what happened on 9/11, then we've got to have a real investigation that gets at the truth. After all, we've lost. Uh, 6,000 U.S. soldiers, a million Iraqis and Afghanis have lost their lives, at least, maybe 2 million. Um, and we have draconian policies that have set forth, uh, that have, uh, well, our legislators have sacrificed our civil liberty uh, in, in favor of uh, security. So we don't, we don't hand in our freedom for security, especially with all of the questions that Bill is raising, um, or we're going to lose both. That is a very astute observation. So, Mr. Binney, you obviously have been uh, uh, you've been sort of in the United States for the past 13 years and, and viewing what's going on. And yet you say that this is the first time in that 13 years that you've really been presented with the evidence of, uh, of controlled demolition at the World Trade Center complex in a, a thoroughgoing manner in that 13 year period. What do you think that tells us about the state of the, the mainstream media and its abdication of responsibility in actually informing the public of these issues? Well, like I, like I, I think I tried to imply that they were they had a selective outcome. They were they were picking basic facts to meet. So in other words, they were they were prejudicing the entire argument to get to a point where they wanted to be, and nobody challenged that. I mean, our 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 uh, when it comes to national security, anything that comes close to that, none of the mainstream media really challenges it in any way. I mean, you, you could see people in Russia Russia today, or maybe. Uh, when Elliot Spitzer had his show on on uh, current TV, or uh, uh, Glenn Beck, or or uh, Bill Maher, even I mean it's across the entire spectrum. 
those people are standing up and saying, hey, you know, this is this is something we should really be concerned about. So uh, but the mainstream media is out to lunch. And uh, I think that's the way they want to be, because that gives them that continues to give them access to, you know, people they need to interview and things like that. I think that appears to me to be the reason they're doing it. Well, as I'm sure you're aware, the implications of the petition that you have signed are, um, if you'll excuse the pun, quite explosive insofar as they do posit a fundamentally different narrative of 9-11 than the one that we've, we've, been, uh, we've been told all, the, all of this time. And obviously, this hinges on an extremely important uh, detail, I suppose you could call it a detail, whether or not these buildings were taken down as the result of a controlled demolition. And if that is the case, if we can establish that scientifically, that does fundamentally change the narrative of who was involved and what the government knew and what has taken place in the meantime. Uh, what, what can you say about the implications of, of this investigation and, and what it can possibly uncover about what really happened on 9-11? Well, I, you know, I think uh, I've been uh, basically saying that uh, they, they've been perpetrating a fraud on the, pop, on the people of the United States. So <clears throat> that's, that's really what has to be addressed. Let's get the truth out here. They don't they don't seem to want to address the truth. They don't want the truth out. That's all. So, uh, you know, my point is very simple. We, let's let's have at it again. And this time, let's do it right and uh, and be honest with the outcome that we get. I mean, even if they even if they if they observe something or find something and they can't explain it, they should at least say, "Well, we saw this, but we don't know what it means." They could say that too. I mean, that's fair enough. I, I think no reasonable person can disagree with that, but unfortunately, as I'm sure you must be aware, a, a, anyone who's even been associated with questioning the official uh, commission report or the congressional investigation into 9-11 has been deemed a crackpot, a conspiracy theorist, all of these labels. And I'm sure you are now prepared for this label to be applied to yourself in this case. Uh, what, what do you think might be the ramifications on this in terms of the attacks on your own personal character? Well, I don't, I don't see any of that. I mean, after all, they called me a, a disgruntled employee when I left talking about these things. So that's why that was the technique they got to. Um, I mean, at least they didn't call me uh, semi-insane like they did with Russ Tice. I mean, they called him that. I mean, they called him mentally disturbed. And so um, that was how they discredit people. It's how you, at standard KGB tactics, by the way, except the only difference was they didn't put him in an institution. That's the only difference. The implications of this are staggering on so many levels, and again, I, I just don't think that most of the public truly appreciates this yet, so I think we have to get the word out about this, and one of the ways to delegitimize this system, of course, is to delegitimize the founding uh, the founding rallying principle of all of this, which is the September 11th attacks, which somehow seemed to justify, in the minds of some, the all of this abrogation of, of basic civil liberties. So it is a, a momentous thing, I think, when we start to see some of these different threads coming together and, and uh, different people working together, which is why I'm glad to see William Binney, a signatory to AE911truth.org's petition, which again will be linked up in the show notes for this. Uh, Mr. Gage, any final thoughts that you'd like to leave us with uh, today? I think it's extremely important that we have uh, people who are not just listening to this vital information, this wake-up call, but doing something about it. And so we're encouraging everybody this September 11th, when the consciousness of the American people and people around the world are focused on 9-11, it is such a, a, a vulnerable hinge point in the plan, if you will, of the perpetrators, whoever they are, of, uh, of 9-11, that we use it to the maximum uh, possible extent. Uh, to to uh, break uh, the the censorship wall, the wall of denial in people, um, by bringing this information as we've highlighted it on our website, <clears throat> ae nine eleven truth dot org, and um, email it to every architect, engineer, every media official, every political official, that that people can. This is the time to act. Uh, and to uh, and to wake up people, and we found uh, that uh, the scientific evidence, uh, as has uh, woken up, if you will, in the case of uh, William here um, with us, uh, it it does work. We've just got to get people to look at it, and that's the listener's responsibility today. 
Well, then let's leave it in the hands of the listeners and viewers out there and thank both of our guests for your time. William Binney, Richard Gage, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us today. Thank you for having me. For more on this story and other breaking news and current events, please go to globalresearch.ca. For more research and analysis by James Corbett, please go to corbettreport.com. The Center for Research on Globalization depends on your support. To purchase a book or DVD, or to make a donation, please visit globalresearch.ca today.